Hey guys, welcome back to another True Crime Thursday. Today I'm going to be talking about the serial killer duo Charlene and Gerald Gallagher. <laughs> they are both terrible people who, who met each other at the right time. Right time. <laughs> and started murdering people. It started out as just love. And it got so much worse. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy. <sighs> Charlene Gallego was born as Charlene Adele Williams in Sacramento, California on October 10th, 1956. Her father, Charles, was a respected entrepreneur and vice president of a supermarket chain. He and his wife, Mercedes, often traveled as part of their business life. Early school reports suggest Charlene was a quiet and shy kid who had good attendance. Charlene's mother was hurt badly in a car accident and could no longer travel with her husband. Charlene took over her mother's duties and would sometimes go on trips with her father. It was there she was often praised for being a well-spoken and intelligent child. But by high school, Charlene was taking drugs and bragged to her friends about a black lover. I mean, you could just say a lover, you didn't have to specify what color skin he has. Just saying. Charlene eventually married a young, wealthy man who was addicted to heroin. He claimed Charlene was obsessed with lesbian sex and begged him to have a threesome with her and a prostitute. She was also using a large number of drugs and didn't care what she looked like, you know? Her first husband hated that Charlene's parents kept intervening with their marriage and so it ended horribly and they divorced. Charlene's next husband was a soldier who Charlene called a mother's boy. She grew bored of him and they divorced. Okay. Charlene then had an affair with a married woman, but it was ended when she tried to get him to have a threesome with her and his wife. After the breakup, she tried to kill herself, but failed. And this is when she met Gerald. Gerald was born on July 17, 1946. His mother and her numerous boyfriends had beaten him during his formative years, and when his mother became a prostitute, some of her clients would also beat the shit out of him. He was often left hungry and dirty and just wanted love, but of course, his mother's a t huge freaking bitch. <laughs> his natural father, who played no part in his life, was executed after killing two cops. So, you know, great life. Like Charlene, Gerald had failed as a lover and a spouse and married numerous women, but left them after they ran out of money. He also started sexually abusing his daughter. Gerald liked rough sex, and Charlene responded to this. At first, their sex life was so good that they could barely, like, get off of one another. Gerald particularly enjoyed sodomizing Charlene. But later, she said in court that she hated the painful experience, obviously. Charlene was sexually submissive. The submissive often indicates what they like uh, or enjoys, and in a way, it's submissive takes charge. So they tell the dom what they like, and the dom will do that. Charlene was disliked in work for being too flirtatious with her male coworkers, but she wanted a man who could take charge and be dominant. Gerald appeared streetwise and very masterful. Within a week of meeting each other, they had rented a house and moved in. Real quick, don't you think? A week? Maybe wait a little longer? <laughs> Gerald soon moved beyond flowers and chocolates, and Charlene accepted that he was more interested in his own sexual satisfaction. Charlene was fantasized by the machismo and was soon sharing in his illicit fantasy. After they had been living together for a few months, Gerald brought home a 16-year-old dancer and they had a threesome together. He made sure the two women only touched him and not each other. After he returned home from work, however, he found Charlene and the dancer in bed together. Enraged, he threw the girl out a window. I don't know how high the window was, but I don't think she died, so I'm going to guess maybe a one-story window. Because if it was any higher, there's a chance of death. And then he hit Charlene. He then withheld sex from her because he said he became impotent, but in reality though, most likely he just found her unattractive because she'd shown she was not fully dependent on him for sexual kicks. Gerald soon sodomized his 14-year-old daughter and her friend, like an 
mass. And he did so with Charlene's knowledge. It is unclear if she was in the same room or in the same apartment, but evidently she didn't find anything wrong with what he was doing. This suggests she had um, lack of conscience, which suggests she is a sociopath. With Gerald working as a bartender, Charlene suspected he was sleeping with his customers as he was now disinterested in her sexually, like, I'm not touching you with a 10-foot pole. When the couple had been together for a year, he said that he needed a pair of love slaves to turn him on and asked Charlene to procure them. Some sources suggest she agreed because she saw in his word as law and wanted to make him happy. But it's more likely that she wanted to satisfy her own strong lesbian t desires and total control of a helplessly tied up girl. Whatever her motivation, she agreed to lure teenage victims to him and their uncertain death. On September 11th, 1978, two teenagers, 17-year-old Rhonda Scheffler and 16-year-old Kippy Vaught, disappeared from a mall in Sacramento. Charlene lured them to a nearby van, leading to their abduction by the couple. Gerald used a handgun to threaten the girls and tied them up. He, they drove to Baxter, where Gerald repeatedly raped the girls and then executed them with a single shot to the back of their heads. On June 24th, 1979, 14-year-old Brenda Jude and 13-year-old Sandra Colley were abducted from a Washoe County Fair in Reno, Nevada. Charlene later testified that Gerald beat the girls to death with a shovel or hammer. The remains were not found or identified until 20 years later. Similarly, on April 24th, 1980, Stacey Ann Redican and Karen Chipman Twiggs, both 17, went missing from a Sacramento mall. They were found in July, sexually abused, and bludgeoned to death. While hitchhiking on June 6, 1980, 21-year-old Linda Teresa Aguilar, who was pregnant, was abducted, murdered with a blunt object, and buried in a shallow grave. Outside of Gold Beach, Oregon. On July 17, 1980, 34-year-old Virginia Mako was abducted from the parking lot of a West Sacramento tavern where she worked as a bartender. Her skeletal remains, still bound with nylon fishing line, were found three months later outside of Clarksburg. Loops of cord from the victim's neck were emitted as proof of death by strangulation. Finally, while leaving a fraternity party on November 1st, 1980, 22-year-old Craig Miller and his fiancée, 21-year-old Mary Elizabeth Sowers, were forced into the Gallagos car by gunpoint. Miller was ordered out of the car and shot his body found near Bass Lake. The couple returned to their apartment with Sowers, where Gerald sexually abused her before taking her to a field in Placer County, where he executed her. The Gallagos targeted women. Their first victims were in their teens, but the later ones were abducted in their early 20s, and Virginia was in her 30s. More often than not, they abducted two at a time. They would abduct them from public or semi-public places, often at gunpoint with a .357 Magnum, with Charlene acting as the lure and taking them to their van, where Gerald would rape them repeatedly before killing them in various ways, usually by shooting them with a 25 caliber Beretta or bludgeoning them with random objects. Linda Aguilar and Virginia Mako both were abducted alone and were strangled. A friend of Miller and Sowers witnessed their abduction and reported the car's license plate number. Police used this information to track down and arrest the Gallagos at a Western Union office. Gerald and Charlene pleaded not guilty to charges of kidnapping and murder. Hmm. Charlene's attorneys were eventually able to convince prosecutors in several states slash counties to allow Charlene to testify against Gerald for a plea deal, reducing her sentence to ne merely 16 years and eight months. In June 1983, Gerald was found guilty. In June 1984, in less than four months, Gerald was found guilty of murder and abrogated kidnapping in the case of Karen Twiggs and Stacey Redekin in Nevada. He was subsequently sentenced to death. In July 1997, Charlene completed her sentence and was released. While in prison, she extensively studied psychology, business, and Icelandic literature. During an interview, Charlene claimed that she was also a victim when she said, There were victims who died, and there were victims who lived. It's taken me a hell of a long time to realize that I'm one of the ones who lived. She also claimed that she tried to save some of the victims, but I don't believe that at all. 
In 2002, Gerald died of cancer in a Nevada prison medical center while awaiting execution. To conclude, bunch of dicks. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. These two? I mean, Charlene's life was pretty much normal. She just had to ruin it. You know, everything was going well for her. You know, she wasn't like... She was well off, honestly. But she had to start doing drugs and stuff like that. Um, well, Gerald's life was a total shit show. Like, I can understand why he'd turn out this way. I mean, he shouldn't have killed people. But I can understand when you have a mother who treats you like trash and all of her boyfriends and her clients beat the shit out of you. I'd be mad too. Do I believe that Charlene was a victim here? Yes and no. If she was a submissive person in general, and he was very, you know, not, he was very dominant, uh, she could just follow his orders because they were law and she was scared to make him angry or she wanted to make him happy. It's possible that she wasn't fully to blame. Now, from what I read and what I looked into, it looked like he did most of the killing, most of the raping, most of everything. But that doesn't mean that she didn't enjoy it or she didn't join in. She may, she might not have killed them, but she was still there and let it happen, so she's not a good person by any means. Should she have gotten more than 16 years? Yes, I think she should have, but here we are, I guess. Um, like, kidnapping people from malls? Uncool, uncool. What makes this worse is that it happened in Cali in the 70s, 80s, which is when all the serial killers decided that Cali was a great place to murder people. Like, if you look at the, like, that range, like, 70s to 80s, a little bit in the 90s, like, serial killers were having a great old time in Cali, like, killing people left and right. You did not want to live in California during that time because you just take the chance of dying. Nowadays, it's a little bit better. I believe it's a lot better. I haven't heard anything about serial killers in Cali, but that doesn't mean there isn't one. But in, like, the 80s area, like, they had, like, four or five serial killers going at the same time. That's insane. It's bad enough when you have to worry about one serial killer trying to kill you, but if there's, like, five in your estate... Dude, you're... you're... you're boned! You're boned! <laughs> so, I am sorry for anyone who had to live in Cali during that time. Um, if you're still alive, well good for you, but you still lived in an area where you had a high chance of dying, so I'm glad you made it out. But yeah, Cali was not a good place to live during this time. Mm -mm -mm. I think these two really were messed up people. Charlene was not as bad as Gerald, and I think when they combined, like, when they got together, it just got worse. If she had not gotten into drugs, maybe she wouldn't have turned out the way she did. If he hadn't been abused as a child, maybe he wouldn't have turned out the way he did. You know, you always, like, sometimes people think that I feel bad for the killers. I don't. I mean, they're killers. They murdered people. Like, they're horrible people. But if you look at their past, almost all of the times that someone turns out to be a murderer, their childhood was shit. Not always. Sometimes they have really great childhoods and then they just snap and then they turn into a murderer. But if you look, a lot of them had abusive parents, parents that abandoned him, sexually abused him, like all these other things. And if they just had good parents, I mean, there's still a chance they could have turned out this way. But it's less likely that they would have turned out this way. So, don't be a shit parent. Or your child might turn into a serial killer. Just saying. Alright guys, I really hope you enjoyed as much as you can enjoy a story like this. I'll be back again on Thursday with another True Crime Thursday, and Monday with whatever I decide to post. Alright guys, I'll see you later. Whew.